everybody, E here. Welcome back to Thursday Theorist. Before we jump into this episode, I want to let you know, um, just giving you a heads up, that Thursday Theorist from here on out will be every month. Um, I know I haven't done one, well I did regulators, but I hadn't done one for like two, two months before that. Um, the reasoning for this is all the books I have left to reread um, are long. Uh, the, it's the the entire, well not the entire, from the Wastelands on from the Dark Tower. I'm almost done with the Wastelands. I, I don't guess when through the keyholes that long, but I have uh, the at least the last five books, if you count when through the keyhole, uh, to go. And then I also have the Black House um, and then the Institute coming up. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. There's some short story collections I have to reread uh, to recheck. Things like, I think, Just After Sunset, I have to reread that one. Um, there's about a dozen episodes left, so you're looking at a year's worth of content. Starting this week, no, this coming week, this, this next week, sorry, I'm shooting all these around the same time. Uh, starting next week, I'm going to be doing um, the actual reviews for Stephen King's work all the way from Carrie, all the way up to the Institute. There are some that exist already, like for today's episode, there's already a review up for The Talisman, uh, but there, and there's also ones for the uh, the Bachman books so far, uh, I believe there's one for The Outsider, for Sleeping Beauty, for Gwendy's Button Box, that kind of thing, um, but I haven't done his, the majority of his catalog. I've done Thursday Theorists with tiny reviews at the beginning, but anyways. Um, that's what, that's what we're doing going forward. Uh, there will be plenty of King content for those of you who are only here for the King content. I assure you, we have plenty to do. Even after Thursday Theorist wraps, there's other ideas and things I have as far as Stephen King content. But today, we are talking about the Talisman and this Bull Bull cover. I hate this cover. But the, I mean, the, the hard cover isn't, isn't much better. And I showed it in the, the review. The first edition isn't much better. I mean, it's okay. I guess it's better than this one with the uh, the car and the wolf on the lonely road. And I just I, I don't like it. It's very plain and very generic looking. Um, and the Photoshop or whatever artwork this is uh, is just really really bad. Anywho, so if uh, you want to check out my review for the Talisman, my spoiler free review, I'll leave a link down there in the doobly doo. Uh, but today we are going to focus because it's going to be a long video. Aside from all this talking I'm doing at the beginning, it's going to be a long video because I found a ton of stuff that is not mentioned online I couldn't find anywhere. Could there be some random sub-thread somewhere? Of course there could. And I don't use Reddit. So if this stuff's on Reddit, I don't know about it. What I did was I checked the uh, Stephen King Wikia, or Wiki, powered by Wikia, um, and then I also checked uh, StephenKing.com, and I checked both the Dark Tower connections and the user submitted connections, none of which I'm going to be discussing here. So if you'd like to check out those, there's some wild shit in uh, um, in the fan connections. It's it's worth a laugh uh, if you just go check that out. One person makes a connection between the town of Danville and Patrick Danville from the final Dark Tower book, which I think is kind of reaching, but fans of the series here will know that I've reached myself at some times, but I always try to root, I always have a wild theory, and then I try to root it actually in the universe itself. This one like I said, there's a there's a bunch of stuff. We're going to go ahead and get into it. Um, I'm going to start right off. On page 6, there is a reference to a movie called Blaze. Now, we know from the introduction to Blaze that Stephen King wrote Blaze way back in the way back, uh, before this one was published. One thing we need to keep in mind as we're going through this episode of Thursday Theorist is uh, the time frame in which Stephen King and Peter Straub wrote this book. Um, once again, I'm not this Peter Straub theorist. I don't know that much about him. Um, I haven't even read all of his work, especially not his last five. Um, so it, I'm not as well read where he's concerned. So if there's any connections to Peter Straub stuff, please leave it all down here in the doobly-doo. As, as, as long as it's not a spoiler, because I do plan on, on eventually reading all of his stuff. To this day, I've read Julia, uh, If You Could See Me Now... Um, Ghost Story, which is fantastic, by the way. Uh, Shadowlands, that's great also. Um, Coco, and I think that's it. Uh, I keep getting stalled on Floating Dragon, but we'll get there eventually. Okay, so the mention of a movie called Blaze that uh, the mother, Jack's mother, ends up winning 
uh, an Academy Award for, I believe. By the way, let's stop here. There's going to be spoilers for the entire book. There might even be spoilers for everything Stephen King has written. I always give this warning. It may not be. We may not tackle every single book in his collection, but I want you to be aware that I'm just going to get. I'm going to get going, and there might be spoilers. So if you're not well read on Stephen King, I probably suggest you either go back and watch the uh, the series from the beginning or just go read the damn books. Let's get back to the, the to the theories video. Okay, uh, so on page 80, Sloat uh, mentions a train. Um, the, there's a lot of this stuff, and we'll get to Black House also, but there are some fan theories that I am enjoying right now about the Institute because the cover has a boy on a train. So I'm wondering at this point if all of this is going to tie back around. I'm also wondering if the Institute is the third Jack Sawyer novel without Straub. Uh, because we were told back in 2005 by Straub that they were working on a third book. And King in 2006 or 2007, I'd have to look up the interview again. But King said that they were working on another novel. And all of a sudden, there's no more talk about a third Jack Sawyer novel. So, but it seems like they were going somewhere else with the trains, with the with the train idea. And having a train on the front of the institute has given me, uh, has has sparked even more. Having read fan theories, um, there's a uh, Tony's King page, I think it is on Instagram. I can't I can't recall if that's it or not. I'm sorry, uh, but uh, I think he brought up this idea first that these that the trains were connected to uh, the Talisman and, well, actually the Black House. But we'll get to that when we get to Black House. Right now we're focusing on this one. Um, page 121. I'm going to go ahead and read this one. I don't remember exactly what my note was. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, he was trying to fasten the front of his uniform over his bulging gut while holding a curly French horn-like instrument at the same time. Now, I'm not saying this is the Horn of Eld. I'm saying that the Horn of Eld is, is carried by guards and knights and all that stuff. Um, so could this be a, a kind of not running joke, but a running theme with, uh, with characters in Midworld? You know, could, could these characters just carry around these horns and maybe the Horn of Eld is almost like, you know, Excalibur kind of deal. I don't know. It's a wild theory, but it piqued my interest, so I thought I'd tell you guys about it. Let me know what you think down there in the doobie-doo. Um, at 392, I don't know, this is, this is completely nuts. This one blew me away because nobody's mentioned it. Not a single person. But on page, in this edition anyways, on page 392 of this edition of the book, probably all the paperback copies, uh, he mentioned Sidewinder, Colorado. I mean, come on. It's, a, and it's definitely, it's definitely the mountain because he talks about a mine. We're going to get to mine stuff again here in a second. Uh, not really mine stuff, but we'll, you'll see. Uh, he mentioned Sidewinder, and nobody, uh, Sidewinder is of course where The Shining occurred. Um, it's where the Overlook Hotel was located. Um, and nobody online that I can find has mentioned that whatsoever. So now we have a hard connect. I had some loose connects for The Shining, um, but I, either I didn't catch this the first time I read it, um, or, you know, it just completely slipped from my memory because I don't care too much for this book. But watch my review for that. Um, so, he, I mean, he, it's a hard tie. And this book has a hard tie connection to the Dark Tower series. So we have our hard connection for The Shining. Also, uh, Carrie, um, let's see here, Carrie, da, 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 Abra from uh, Doctor Sleep, uh, Charlie from Firestar, all these the different uh, psycho, uh, psych, psychic abilities or telekinetic abilities or whatnot. Um, there's also, stuff. all these kids are breakers, and we'll go into breakers more as we get to that discussion because there's a lot of spoilers for the Dark Tower stuff when I start talking about breakers. All right, um, next up, at page uh, 449, they talk about the Rainbird Towers. Now, I didn't bother looking this one up, so Patrick, if you want to check uh, your, your, your list, your, your search and find for King, um, isn't the, uh, the agent in, uh, let's see here, Firestarter, the Native American uh, man, isn't his name Rainbird? I think it is. Loose connection, loose connection. Um, Let's see here, and let's look at, uh, we're going to talk about how all these books tie together, but I want to look at the publication date for, I think this was what, 80? 
for, uh, let's see here, fire starter. Let's see here, yeah, 1980. So all of this stuff, there's a five-year period that I'm, I'm going to focus on here in a second, uh, even when discussing a t the Tabitha King book. Uh, the Blasted Lands, are the Blasted Lands the Wastelands? I think they are. Um, it, I, I think it's the, sa the same area. The train, trains go through there. Um, well, there's a train track through there at the very least. And, of course, we know Blaine the Mono in the Wastelands. That's all we're going to talk about there. But there's another connection for you. Um, the, there's a huge, and I didn't notice this at first until my friend Patrick Costin uh, sent me uh, email about how many times the color green pops up in the Stephen King universe. <coughs> and then in this one, I saw it everywhere. Um, if you know the ending of Wizard and Glass, you will know that green or emerald green is an important color. But there's a green bottles, green hallways at Richard Sloat School, a green metal, green sand. There is so much green in this book, I, I can't help but feel like it is an allusion to something. Um, and if it is an allusion to Wizard and Glass, I don't know. Um, but I do... I, I do feel that it is an important thing. Maybe on, I don't really don't want to reread this book again, but maybe I'll find more of the green stuff in The Black House. I can't remember a whole lot about that book. I'm actually looking forward to it. Um, I've heard from some people they liked it more than they liked The Talisman, and these are people who didn't like The Talisman. But people who love The Talisman tend to hate Black House. So I'm hoping that I have the opposite effect. Since I don't like The Talisman, I'm going to enjoy Black House. But we'll see. Okay, there's a Quonset, he talks about Wolf's, the, the Quonset huts um, in, in the book, and it seems awfully familiar to where, what was it, Jake goes in, uh, is it Wolves of the Kala, I think it is, Jake goes to the, uh, the Quonset huts and finds all the bodies everywhere. I'm wondering if that, is, uh, if that scene in Wolves harkens back to, to this little village community from Wolf. Um, then let's see here. Uh, we're going to go. We're going to say one more thing, and then I'm going to go to uh, the the final note. So th this is this is a stretch, but bear with me. Um, there's during the night segment at the end of the book. Um, even though I believe that that section was written by Peter Straub, um, there is a certain red-eyed entity that inhabits the the suits of armor there at the end of the book. The more I read about it, the more I saw similarities to Tack from, I don't have it over here, but from the regulators and from Desperation. There is a bunch of stuff that, that feels like it is from that, especially regulators. You know how in regulators, spoilers for regulators, I know I said this at the beginning, but these are big spoilers. You know how in the regulators, all the eyes are popping out of the head. What well, is said that the eyes exploded in this one. And they have the red eye entity. And we have Tack, who has red eyes. Now, I'm not saying that The Regulators was written way back then. I'm saying that Stephen King maybe took from this section to do the monster from that. And I've already connect. I've already theorized that the entity known as Tack is nothing but those red lights, just like I believe the entity IT is the dead lights. That is, they are nothing but the lights. At the same time, at the same time as all of this, you look toward the wizard's rainbow, the different colors of that, and then you have the talisman in here. I mean, if the talisman isn't one of the balls, I don't know what it is. I mean, it's either all of them or one of them. Um, the talisman does feel like it is all of them, is what it feels like. Like they're all encased in that because they're talking about all the worlds and galaxies and everything. Okay, now we are going to go talk about Gwendy's button box. I have It's up here in the stack. I'm not going to drag it out. But... In, and here's where the connections come into play with all these books being written at the same time. I said a long time ago, well, not a long time ago, when I did A Small World by Tabitha King, when I did my theory video on that one, I said, I brought up uh, that one of the characters talks about a box that could, you could press a button and something would happen in the world. Um, and it's, it's a character's thoughts. It's like, I've always thought about this box that, you know, what, whatever, it sounds like Gwendy's button box. 
Um, that's, even though it's the imagination of that character, um, and it's not an actual item in the story, it does feel like Gwendy's button box. And uh, Small World was, let's see here, I don't want to move the figure, but I think it's eight, between 81 and 84. That's really the time frame we're working on here. Um, also, between 80, it was just basically 80 and 85, there's a bunch of stuff that Stephen King bundled together. Uh, like he got the idea of how to end it and connect all the worlds while he was writing The Wastelands. Um, and he wrote uh, it between 81 and 85, I believe. I know it was published in 86. Now, going back to Gwendy's button box, on page 263 of this edition of the book, I'm going to read you an entire section. Uh, also, another thing to keep in mind uh, in the Talisman, when people flip and go to the territories, items become either subtly different or massively different. Like, um, I think, get, what does the, the guitar pick turn into? I can't remember. But the, the guitar pick turns, well, the guitar pick is a pick in the territories, and I can't remember what it is in the real world. Uh, but that's what, uh, I keep wanting to call the dude Jake, Jack. That's what Jack uh, uses to kill the knights. But here, uh, interlude, Sloat in this world, two. From the pocket of his bulky parka, he had bought it convinced that from the Rockies east, America was a frigid wasteland after October 1st or so. Now he was sweating rivers. Morgan Sloat took a small steel box. Below the latch were ten small buttons and an oblong of cloudy yellow glass a quarter of an inch high and two inches long. He pushed several of the buttons carefully with the fingernail of his left hand pinky, and a series of numbers appeared briefly in the readout window. Sloat had bought this gadget, billed as the world's smallest safe, safe in Zurich, according to the man who had, who had sold it to him. Not even a week in a crematory oven would breach its carbon steel integrity. What do we know about Gwendy's button box? Gwendy's button box has all these buttons on it. And every time she pressed a button, she got a shiny new coin. This item from Morgan Sloat is a bank. Now, is Morgan Sloat a twinner of Randall Flagg? I don't know. Um, we, do know we do know of his twinner in the book, but there are other worlds than these. So, that's where I am at with this one. We will continue this discussion in the next episode of Thursday Theorist uh, for The Black House. From that point on, we are going to be finishing up the novella collections, the short story collections. We are going to finish up everything um, in, in that time frame. Uh, and then finally, we are going to end with the final eight episodes of... You know, for the final eight episodes are going to be about the Dark Tower. So did I miss anything? Let me know down there in the comments below. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Thursday Theorist Review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!